So many artists in their studio, they paint uh, when you know they have music playing. That's the same thing I did here. But uh, when I was uh, in Yerevan, you know, I studied here. I had my master's in painting and illustration from Yerevan State University. I was always fascinated by illustration. I said, how can I figure out a way to illustrate sound? So listening to music and, and creating a large scale lines where you don't erase it. You just do the lines almost you're documenting just the, the sound in it. The, the, the most in the advanced civilization goes, destroys the, the oldest civilization. So it's almost like it's our job to come up uh, with something to document this. Kinan introduced me to amazing musicians because he went to Juilliard, so we did work at Juilliard Music School and through Juilliard I met you know, other violinists from, you know, through other violinists I met uh, Yo-Yo Ma and I became part of the Silk Road project and uh, started representing uh, Armenia, you know, in Japan and uh, in uh, America, in different museums. The way Kivork's work influences me uh, and still does until today actually, is the fact that he thinks about time. You know, in lots of artworks, uh, music, music and theater and cinema are usually time controlled. When you go to an exhibition for a painting, you decide that the pacing of time. You can spend one second or 15 minutes looking at a painting. The way Kivork works is uh, he shows you the time process and this is very musical in a way. You know? So the way he's pacing, the way he paces his colors or the lack of colors, like what you saw today, dictates what kind of elements do I use. I mean, the fact that he's a painter who has all the palette of colors in front of him, but he doesn't use that, inspired me also to use a very limited number of musical vocabulary too.